General Petraeus, welcome to the, uh, to the program. All those things I just laid out, all that stuff we've been watching this week, the dangers in uh, the Middle East, are you concerned now that it could start spilling into a wider war? Well, I think you have to be concerned, Christiana. In fact, the way I would characterize the overall global situation uh, is that we face more challenges in number and more complex and more dangerous challenges that arguably at any time since the end of the Cold War, if not the end of World War II. Uh, it's a very, very dicey situation out there as you characterized it. So that's pretty, you know, pretty dramatic language in comparison. So from your perspective, from U.S. perspective, what is the most dangerous or can you not separate them? Well, I think it's hard to separate them because in a given day, one will emerge as more challenging at the moment than the other. But I think we can never lose sight of the most important relationship in the world. And that is the one, of course, between the U.S. and really the U.S. led West and China. Uh, that is the one that has the greatest influence. It's also the one that has the greatest potential downside, if you will. Uh, and it's that relationship that is the central issue of the day, even as very clearly uh, the situation in Ukraine, the challenges in the greater Middle East, uh, North Korea, uh, the continued threats of Islamist extremists around the world, cyber threats, all of these uh, these are all plates, uh, if you will, that we have to keep split, spinning simultaneously. But the plate that is bigger and matters more than all the others is that, again, which represents the challenge uh, of the relationship between the U.S., the West and China. So let me ask you just to elaborate on that, because, you know, a couple of months ago, Presidents Xi and Biden met uh, in California, and there seemed to be the beginnings of maybe some kind of de-escalation in some way. But now the latest is that the U.S. thinks that it's seen, uh, you know, China moves to upgrade or rebuild its, its nuclear sites, and we have an election year in Taiwan, which could actually, uh, you know, could be, a, could be a problem if the pro-independence faction wins. Is that what you see? Is that, where do you see a trigger point? Well, first of all, I think that the meeting between our two presidents was very modestly encouraging. It's far better than it not happening. Uh, the subsequent meetings between various counterparts in our two governments, uh, engagement by other countries, uh, of the U.S. led West with, with China. This is all an effort to try to establish a floor for a relationship uh, in which, in a fairly recent episode, as a spy balloon was floating over the United States, uh, we picked up the phone in the Pentagon and no one in Beijing answered. So again, having communication, I think, is a positive development, but this is not a, an enormously positive. This is a beginning an effort between the two countries, noting that, our, as our national security advisor has described it, the relationship is one of severe competition. What we have to do, of course, is ensure that the elements of deterrence are rock solid, the potential adversary's assessment of our capabilities on the one hand and our willingness to employ this, them on the other cannot be questioned. But we, while needing to be very firm, do not want to be needlessly provocative. But again, I think modest encouragement, the efforts to, re to build their uh, nuclear capability to expand it, those have been ongoing for a very long period of time. Uh, but again, these recent episodes, I think modestly, uh, again, encouraging. Okay, let, let's go to the kind of two big crises that are happening right now, two wars that the U.S. has to manage. Um, you know, you have said about Gaza um, that Israel should clear, hold and build. What do you mean by that? And, and, you know, there's been a lot of criticism now from the U.S. building and allies about the, you know, the, the, the huge death toll that has been incurred by Israel's counteroffensive after the slaughter in, of October 7th. What concerns you most about how that is unfolding? Well, first, I think it is a question whether Israel can achieve the objective it has set out, with which I agree, by the way. I believe that Hamas does need to be destroyed. I think it is akin to the Islamic State, an imperfect analogy given the Palestinian national elements here. But I do believe it needs to be destroyed. 
That's one of Israel's three major stated objectives. The other is to dismantle the political wing. I agree with that objective. And obviously to get their hostages uh, released and recovered. <clears throat> but the way to do that, as we, you and I have discussed since the beginning, is by clearing and holding, by separating uh, the population, the people, from the extremists. Uh, and I don't see that happening uh, across Gaza. And now the withdrawal of five brigades from the Israeli Defense Force effort in there is, I think, raising questions about whether Israel can actually destroy Hamas, again, dismantle the political wing, uh, and by the way, also keep Hamas from reconstituting. Because, of course, there are some additional big ideas that have long been needed, such as you know, the post-conflict operation. Who is going to oversee Gaza? No hands are going up in the region. There's certainly no competent, capable, trustworthy Palestinian entity that can be brought over from the West Bank. And it appears by default that Israel will have to do that. And I think the sooner, sooner that that reality is acknowledged, and Washington accepts that as well, because there is no viable alternative. If you want to be sure that Hamas cannot reconstitute, uh, then that they should be planning accordingly. But above all, who's going to get the additional humanitarian assistance that's desperately needed for the people? What is the vision for the people uh, of Gaza? And by the way, for the West Bank, while we're at it, uh, and who's going to oversee, uh, who's going to hold and then rebuild, oversee the reconstruction, the restoration of basic services, the reopening of markets, schools, clinics, etc. I have felt that the hospital should have been kept open, Al Shifa in particular, but all of them, and treat the civilians in these hospitals, C control them, though, ensure that the tunnels underneath them, headquarters or whatever is being done in them, yep. uh, is not allowed. Uh, and is eliminated, but again, they need to provide for the people without question.